Honoured guests, members of the Board of Governors and the Academic Board, ladies and gentlemen graduands, may I welcome you all very warmly to this graduation ceremony of De Montfort University, at which we shall receive the graduands and diplomates from the Faculty of Arts, Design and Humanities, who have completed their studies in 2017 and confer on them their various degrees and diplomas. For those of you who are graduating here today, we hope that you will value the time that you have spent at De Montfort University and that you will continue to keep in touch with us through our Alumni Association, which brings together our graduands from around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you today to celebrate with all of us the achievements of those who are here today to receive awards and honors and to offer them our warmest congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Vice-Chancellor of De Montfort University, Professor Dominic Shallard. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you to the venue for this, the very final graduation ceremony of our week. It might be the last, but we're going to make it the best. And to do that, I need the help of mums and dads and guardians, friends, brothers and sisters, because the most important part of this ceremony is when the graduates come up this ramp. And when they come here to re receive their degree certificate, you've got to cheer as loudly as you possibly can. Now, I have had a bet all week with the Deputy Vice-Chancellor whose ceremony will be the loudest. His is the loudest at the moment. It was business and law. Everything depends on you. I really need your help. So I'm going to walk up the ramp on a count of three. You're in the mood, aren't you? I can see that, yeah. I'm going to watch this one here. Count for three. Big cheer, please. Three, two, one. Fantastic. Brilliant. It's looking good, Bill. It's looking good. OK, so this is my formal speech to the graduates. I'm so very proud to be here today with you to celebrate this immense achievement of graduating from De Montfort University. I can just about remember my own graduation ceremony in 1927. <laughs> White tails, lots of Latin, lots of bowing. And today is also a day of ceremony and procession, but it's also one of celebration and most of all being proud of your achievements. And you should really allow yourself a chance, a moment, just to reflect upon how far you've come since you started your journey, your degree at DMU. And I know you'll also be sitting there thinking about what's next. Some of you might know what you're going to do. You might be about to start a job. You might be going to travel. Or you might have the possibility of further study. It's obviously a world that's ever-changing. And so many things have happened during your time here at DMU. In fact, when many of you first started your degree studies, there was a referendum on whether Scotland should become an independent country and break apart from the United Kingdom. We've seen not one, but two general elections, with the results shaking the political establishment and leaving very little strength or stability. There was last summer's EU referendum, which has triggered a near unprecedented interest in political engagement in the United Kingdom. Donald Trump sits in the White House as the leader of the free world. And just in case you didn't think things could get any crazier, Leicester City won the Premier League. <laughs> Let's have that again. Leicester City, when you were here, won the Premier League. And you saw it. You witnessed history. Now, extreme or unusual political developments can often encourage us to stop and to look at the world in which we live to look closely at the people around us and the way in which we engage, engage with one another. Now, obviously, many of the developments of the last three years have been for the worse. President Trump's travel ban, growing suspicions of the other and of different ethnicities and different religions, and sentiments of anti-intellectualism, encapsulated by a cabinet minister who said that this country was tired of experts. But as university graduates, our students have a duty to speak out against intolerance and also the vilification of experts, because universities are a public good, institutions of intellect 
of knowledge creation and knowledge exchange. And our students are our representatives. Many of you will be familiar with the story of Stephen Lawrence, the teenager who was murdered in South London in 1993. Doreen Lawrence, Stephen's mother, is now the chancellor of our university. Faced with extreme adversity, she said, I could have shut myself away, but that's just not me. Instead, Doreen has campaigned tirelessly for changes to the Race Relations Act and the Criminal Justice Act. She's clearly helped to make Britain a much better society. And she also launched her charitable trust in 1998 to promote equal opportunities for all young people. So as our students enter the world outside of DMU, they become representatives, like Doreen, of a global outlook. People who believe in community, who believe in citizenship and diversity. When some would have us look inwards and, ins and be insular, we implore our students to encourage others to be outward looking to become citizens of the world, to embrace compassion and to embrace tolerance. And so many of our students have already begun to do this at DMU. I want to share with you an observation from Mahatma Gandhi, somebody, somebody with whom's work I've become very familiar because of our university's extensive engagement with India. He said, you must be the change that you want to see in the world. You must be the change that you want to see in the world. And I think that we can take Tremendous inspiration from this quote. As graduates of DMU, you've made a conscious choice to commit yourself to learning, to grow as individuals, and to succeed through adversity. You're part of a generation whose voice has been reawakened. We saw this at last month's general election, when record numbers of students voted. You volunteered through the square mile. You've had an international engagement through DMU Global. You are our optimism and our change. We can be hopeful because you are making your voice heard and taking action against the things that you believe are wrong and in support of the things that you believe are right. Now, I don't know what's going to happen in the next three years, let alone the next 12 months, but I do know this. As graduates of DMU, you can go out into the wider world full of confidence, confidence in your university, because DMU was ranked in the top third of British universities in the Teaching Excellence Framework when we were given a gold rating three weeks ago. The TEF, as it's known, was created by the government to provide for the first time an assessment of universities focused solely on the metrics that matter most to prospective students, to parents and to employers. Teaching quality, student satisfaction and graduate outcomes. Our gold ranking means that DMU was judged as outstanding for the quality of its teaching and also for the experience that it provides its students. We were ranked number one in the country for highly skilled employability and for further study. Overall, we were ranked fifth out of almost 140 British universities, and we're second in the country for the way that we support our disabled students and students from the black, Asian and minority ethnic groupings. You can also take confidence from a global outlook and being part of our international community of students and alumni. Now, I know that many of you have undertaken a DMU Global trip during your time at DMU. Many of you were with us in New York last January when we took 1,087 students overseas. Or even three weeks ago when we went to Berlin. And talking to students over the last couple of weeks, I know that one of the biggest regrets you've got about leaving DMU is the fact that you think you won't be able to participate on a DMU Global trip again. But I'm very pleased, therefore, to be able to announce that we are going to allow you as alumni and as graduates to come back to your university, if you want, to go on a DME Global trip. So the next three mass trips that we have to New York in January 2018, to Hong Kong with the British government in, in March 2018, and back to Berlin next June, we will be reserving a proportion of those places for our alumni. And I hope very much indeed that you'll take up the opportunity to come back and to re-engage. The final thing I want to say about confidence relates to how you can derive confidence from yourselves, from your own successes and experiences at DMU, whether they're academic, volunteering or sport, or through individual endeavour or enterprise. For many of you, the choice of what is next will be the first of many choices that you will need to make. Where you find success, there may be also disappointment and challenge, but we don't want you to be beaten down by that. You are allowed to fail and to fail again until you succeed. Making a choice is not always about making the right choice. 
It's about making a decision and committing to it without being paralysed by fear or regret. And the poet Robert Frost captured this notion beautifully in his poem, The Road Not Taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveller. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other, the Chester's Fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same, and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less travelled by, and that has made all the difference. Now, I spoke earlier about Gandhi's assertion that you must be the change that you want to see in the world, and of course that's true. But the degree that you receive today doesn't just give you permission to change things, it commits you to it. As graduates, you won't just be making your way in the world, but making the world for us and making it better. Amid an increasingly empty clamour for attention, thoughtful, authentic and honest voices are desperately needed. Make your voice heard and listen too. Listen to the voices of others. Graduation is change. You have taken your hard work and the fun times, your commitment and your sacrifice, your setbacks and your bounce backs, your planning and moments of inspiration, great teaching and your own talent, and turn them all into this success that we celebrate today as you receive your degree from De Montfort University. This is your time to shine. Take the lead, be the voice, be the change. Thank you very much indeed, and many, many congratulations. Members of the Faculty of Arts, Design and Humanities, by the powers vested in me by the Board of Governors and the Academic Board, I confer on you the awards to which you are entitled. Please commence the presentation of graduates and diplomates to the Pro-Chancellor. Honourable Pro-Chancellor, I present to you the graduates and diplomates of the Faculty of Arts, Design and Humanities, who by their achievement have had conferred on them academic awards of the university. The School of Architecture, the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Architectural Studies, Kushnud Fadaus. In Architecture, Adam Richard Ackroyd. Jody Adams. Sir Justin Agon. Barbara Akinkunmi. Philippa Beaumont. <laughs> Hannah Bird. <laughs> Owen Brown. Winner of the Brownell Haywood Brown Architects Award, winner of the School of Architecture Top BA3 Student Prize, and winner of the Royal Institute of British Architects Bronze Medal nomination, Eleanor Grace Butcher. <laughs> David Michael Carr. Christian Peter Caton. <laughs> Mary, 
Yik Hei Chan. Yu Hin Chun. Lauren Marie Clancy. Andreas Constantinu. Carol Dadden. Winner of the Brownhill Haywood Brown Architects Award and winner of the Leicester and Rutland Society of Architects President's Medal for BA Architecture, Natasha Cabral di Castello Branco. Gemma Dimatite. Marina Ethimu. <laughs> Stephen Miguel Oliveira Ferreira. <laughs> David Michael Gladstone. George Ground. <laughs> Winner of the Brownhill Haywood Brown Architects Award, Katarzyna Griskevich. <laughs> Athena Zara Binti Hafitz. Mohammed Ashraf Nahid Hassan. Georgina Amy May Hewitt. Valerie Iriogbi. Fidoso Jama. Victoria Kalijaye. Zainab Karim. Simran Singh Kasbia. <laughs> Harry George Keeble. <laughs> Liam James Kent. Laura Klimaita. Dion Kwachi. May June Lau. Alexander Lorimer Roberts. <laughs> Harris Mapuru. <laughs> Jenna, 
Jasdeep Mundi. Rafael Antonio Nankesh Tixera. Fumi Ogundemi. Eniola Olori Big Bay. Alexander Tom Poma. Patrick Powell. Jeffrey Jetsadaporn Pragnell. Joseph Royal. Alicia Jemima Ryder. Jessica Marie Sayer. Christopher Shiparnovs. Joseph Matthew Silva. Roshni Sanjay Thakra. Benedict Thompson. Wang Tran. Dwani Vakaria. Winner of the Royal Institute of British Architects Bronze Medal nomination, Joseph White. Benjamin Wiles. Donna Prashani Roses Asinsala Wizidagama. The degree of Master of Architecture, Krupali Ahir. Gunez Alkan. <laughs> Suleiman Danlami Bello. <laughs> David Fletcher. Winner of the School of Architecture, top MArch2 part-time student prize winner of the Royal Institute of British Architects Silver Medal nomination, Danielle Fountain. <laughs> Tina Louise Humphreys. Siliani Kalinikidu.
Tula Kiriaku. Yao Soon Leong. Maria Logothetti. Gautam Margeshwaran. Eniola Magikadumi. Winner of the School of Architecture Top M Arch II Student Prize winner of the Royal Institute of British Architects Silver Medal nomination, David James Morgan. Sanibo Nelson Jarja. Alua Damilola Anita Odiahi. Winner of the Leicester and Rutland Society of Architects President's Medal for BA Architecture, Tinuade Ogundaine. Leanne Rock. <laughs> Meng Hu Teng. Edda Yildrum. Yang Yung. <laughs> the postgraduate diploma in architectural practice, Stephen Roy Allman. <laughs> the degree of Master of Science in Architecture and Sustainability, Ifi Ijindu. Degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Architectural Engineering and Sustainability, Ahmad Shorki Yunis. In Bioclimatic Sustainable Housing, Jamal Mohammed Mohammed Alabid. The School of Design, the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Furniture Design, Harris Priest. In Interior Design, Harriet Calland. Sophie Darmanin. Winner of the Rachel Craig Prize, Rovan Eldea. <laughs> Mariam Hassanpour. <laughs> Zunira Hussein. Sophie May Jeffs. <laughs> Lee, 
Lydia Marie Judge. Gunita Lemasevska. Pachara Lotang. Veronique Okito. Anna Aluilana. Shivani Patel. Vavara Petri. Devita Raja. Shubnit Rihal. Dana Reed. Emma Rocha. Leanne Kate Stanley. Hoi Ki On. Chelsea Walker. Frida Wanjiku. Sophie Jade Whitaker. In product and furniture design, William Matthew Dredge. James Francis Dyer. Sufawadi Isarankun Na Ayutaya. Aaron McDougall. Thomas Reeve. Monique Sperry. Sarah Wharton. In product design, Edward Thomas Baker. Glenn Byford. Chantelle Colantonio. Oliver Cooper.
Albert Hagues. Emily Ann Hancock. Alexandra Nurse. Jacob Paisley. Alexandra Pass. Daniel James Rock. Elizabeth Senior. Daria Suvorova. The degree of Bachelor of Science in Product Design, Katrina Bacon. Ryan Chantry. Jack Fletcher. Rachel Narnia. Michael Ian Granger. James Richard Pease. Pavel Prosna. Zayad Rasul. William Webb. The degree of Master of Design in Interior Design, Larissa Whale. The degree of Master of Arts in Digital Design, Sarah Daniels. In Interior Design, Sophie Howard. The degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Visual Experience, Emotional Reflection, Design for the Elderly, Delai Men. The degree of Bachelor of Arts in Architecture, Ino Tishkwaya. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Architectural Studies, Mohammed Ashfaq Khalil Tayob. This concludes the presentation of the graduates and diplomates from the Faculty of Arts, Design and Humanities.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Vice-Chancellor of De Montfort University, Professor Dominic Shallard. Honoured guests, members of the Board of Governors, members of the Academic Board, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, graduates. I'll say that again, graduates. I just knew this would be the loudest ceremony. Thank goodness for that. Thank you very much. Well, my final duty is to bring this ceremony to an end so that your celebrations can begin. So to all of our graduates, many, many congratulations. You need to be proud of yourselves because we're so proud of you. Go now and make the future. Thank you very much indeed. Many congratulations.